Okay, on the defensive side of the ball, I know you're real, real high on this next young man. He's he's a he's a hard hitting physical player in the defensive backfield. I I've really appreciated his game throughout his whole Aztec career because he seemed to just make plays, special teams plays, defensive plays. He was definitely on our top 12 plays of the year list this season for his interception against San Jose State in that overtime. It was a crucial one-handed interception in the end zone, and it gave us the chance to win that game in overtime. And that's none other than the hard-hitting Trenton Thompson. So, I, like I said, I know you're high on him. So what do you got to say about Trenton Thompson, Coach C? Well, first things first, looking at Trent Thompson's uh, video, and, and I'm going to say this because I think it's, it's due. This defense that we had as an overall group for this 2021 season, I tip my hat off to them. I think they ended up putting themselves as the top defense in San Diego State history and that's saying something when I was coaching as a scrub with San Diego State as just a <laughs> GA we had a special defense there and they were eighth ranked there in the nation at the time led by a linebacker crew and Kirk Morrison Freddie Kialu Matt McCoy you know Bo Tricky and our D-line were led by two guys Ryan Ayata and Brandon Rager and then our secondary we had two guys that went to the league in Marvell Underwood and Jeff Schultz we had leadership and it, they were a special, special group. And I tell you what, I was really proud of that defense because you knew every game we had a shot because of those guys. This group this year really took on that same attitude that any game, any field, no matter the weather, no matter who we were facing, how potent they might be, you just felt like we got a shot because of these guys. And as I watched Trenton Thompson in his video, this is a 6'2 kid. He's long and he's not afraid to hit you. He's not afraid to make a name for himself, to put in your head that wide receiver. I better know where number one eight is at. You know what I mean? Because he is a guy that can do things. And watching his special teams play, he reminded me of Anthony Dorsett, who used to play at Pittsburgh. He was Tony Dorsett's son. And he has some, you know, where he had to have hit and misses in the secondary. He has some big plays and he'll get beat. Big plays. Where he made his money, though, was in special teams. He was notorious, an incredible special teams player because of the field goal blocks, the punt blocks that he had. And he was huge on that. And it prolonged his career. I'm watching Trent Thompson. I'm like, I'm telling you what, this kid is going to do everything he can to make a squad. And there's going to be some special teams coach in April that's going to be pounding their table when he gets to a certain rounds in this draft. And if he's still available, they're going to bond this kid because this kid is a change maker. He's a kid that's going to flip the field because he's going to get that key block. And it's beautiful. I believe he had two punt blocks against UNLV in consecutive seasons. And they were huge plays, game deciding plays. So I hear you when, you, when you're talking about that. I mean, his, his energy on that side of the ball was one thing. But the defense side of the ball was, was another. I remember against Arizona State, a play that we'll always remember we beat them for the second time in, in a row. It was in San Diego. They threw a Hail Mary pass, right? And, you know, it's probably one of those plays that, you know, it, it was a it was ruled a targeting on the field, right? So it's a penalty on them. I, I would argue a, a little bit about that. But the fact is the receiver dropped the ball because mm -hmm. of it. So it ended up saving – the game for us in, in a roundabout way, but just the physicalness of Trenton Thompson spoke volumes, man. Yeah. And you gotta be able, it's so hard for de defensive backs nowadays. Yeah, Everything yeah. is going to be, they have to play with such a cautiousness and that's tough, especially yeah. when you're of that kind of a makeup where you want to enforce in any receiver that you want to make him think twice before he goes over the middle. And it's, I get it. I understand why the league is doing it and at all levels, it makes complete sense. We want, we don't want to see anybody get hurt, but when it comes to players of his caliber that have the ability to enforce just a little bit of a of presence, you know, to make anybody think twice before you come on the field, every defense needs that. And he stood out in a great defensive unit and he stood out and that, that says something. That really says something because we were full of a bunch of hunters 
on this Aztec defense. And he definitely was one of the main guys that knew how to finish one and, and, and basically establish his presence on the football field. And again, he's going to make his money simply because he's long and he's willing huge, huge for a guy that says I'm willing to play special teams on both sides. He wasn't just a guy, you know, playing on go punt or block a punt or block a field goal. He was also when we had to punt the ball, you know, he was on that special teams as well. And, you know, let me go make that tackle or whatever else. So wonderful, fun guy to watch. Another guy we're going to really miss. That's for sure. All right. So here he is. And just the presence about him right here. You're going to make your money, young Aztecs. If you want to make a team, are you willing to play special teams? Are you <laughs> willing him. to be a presence on special teams? It says so much about a player because it's like, whatever it takes, coach, I'm willing to do whatever. And really, this exudes off of film, you know, from a guy like Trent Thompson, where he really is just stretching himself out there. What I was really impressed with him, as you're seeing him, you have to have a knack on angles, where that ball is going to be, how it's going to come off the foot of a punter. And this is what I'm talking about. You see a guy who uses one hand, he's flying right by the punter, and he just understands, he's got a great vision of understanding where that ball is going to be kicked from, and, and uses one hand to make a block against the UNLV that you mentioned earlier. Putting himself in a position where one, he's not going to hit the punter, and two, he still makes the block. That right there is unique. That right there is going to pop when NFL scouts are looking and all that, you know, as far as how can this guy help us? And he can. He's a guy that has a nose that is unlike any other when it comes to special teams. And then he carries that over on the defensive side of the ball in the secondary, yeah. which is just a lot of fun to watch. There he is causing a fumble. And what I notice about him there's certain things that you look at and as far as defensive backs or defenders when they hit you do they move you that means he's really a solid body frame he's got a very solid body frame this poor 84 guy you know he's probably having to wonder what his name is after taking a hit like that and that's the hit that you spoke of earlier yeah. against arizona state i mean that's Oof. if he has his lower teeth still that's something <laughs> i mean he's a guy he definitely is a guy that uh, he might have been born in the wrong generation, you know, and all that stuff. But it, it's we all love seeing what he can do on the field. Just an enforcer. Again, you're, you're over six foot. You're strong, mm. and and you're willing. And that's really what comes to me, to my mind as I watch his film. This is a willing football player, and I mean willing, willing to make contact, willing to join the party and be the center of attraction. He wants to finish you. He wants to finish you. Oh, yeah. He likes to go ahead and let you know he's here. Loves to blitz the quarterback. I think it was J.R. Tolver on our podcast. He said he he reminded him of a Cam Chancellor in, yeah. in his motivation and in his uh, style of play. And that goes a long way. That's what you want to – you want that to be kind of a nice reputation to have. It's yeah. just like, Coach, you know, I'm not going to make mistakes, one. Um, and then – when the ball's coming my way, that receiver is going to have to make sure that he has a great set of hands and an mm. attitude that wants it more than I want it. You know, and that's what I'm saying. He's willing. He's willing. He wants to get it in there, get his nose dirty. You know, he wants to fight. He really was the epitome of what this Aztec defense was. He's a yeah. fighter. He's a guy that just like, no, nah, nothing's coming easy. Nothing's coming easy. Look at him climb over that tight end. Use one hand to avoid contact. You know, I'm watching his tape, and trust me, a great play there again, deep in the end zone. And the reason why he can do that, he's long. And, you know, Matt, when I was a, a little kid, being a Raider fan, we had a set of linebackers with the Raiders, and one of them was Ted Hendricks. They called him the stork because of how long he was. <laughs> and Al Davis had set up a defense back then that there was a lot of long linebackers and long DBs. And when you're long on the defense, that means the passing windows are a lot shorter. They're a lot smaller. When you have a bunch of long dudes, he fits the bill. You know, you really, he's got a great, I mean, his wingspan is incredible for his, for his position, yeah. you know? And yeah, you're right. The Cam Chancellor, I think is a great, you know, comparison only because you know, he's going to put on some pounds. 
You know he's going to put on some muscle. He's already willing as it is, and he's just naturally strong, you know. And I'm, I can't wait what kind of defense he fits in. I mean, he fits like that Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh Steelers type of nastiness of just, you know, they want to hurt you. That AFC North type attitude, yeah. you know, shucks. I would love to have him as a Raider just because he reminds me of some old school guys. But he is just, he's a fun player to watch. And uh, there he is in special teams. I'm just telling you, it's just, it's fun to watch. There's going to be teams that are going to want him. Trust me, you, you don't find 6'2 guys that are long, athletic enough. And when I mean athletic, you know how athletic he is when he can go airborne and still knock the ball down without making contact. Yeah. But at the same time, go through you when you do have the ball, you know? And so that coupled with special teams willingness that he's willing to play and be a factor on the special teams. No, there's going to be plenty of DB coaches as well as special team coaches that are going to be pounding the table for him. And so, yeah, I look forward on April seeing who decides that, you know, let's give this kid a chance because he's something that's going to make an impression.